Well, for some analysis on this, Jeff Moon joins me from here in Washington. He's the president of the consulting firm China Moon Strategies. Welcome to the program. Good to have you again. Thank you. So um, this is going to be the first face-to-face -face meeting between uh, Wang and Blinken since last October. Uh, since then, though, the politics of the world have changed so much from the pandemic to Ukraine. Uh, how different is China-U.S. relations, one? And two, what are some of the topics you think they'll be talking about? Well, I think that at the G20 um, and other large international meetings like this, the real business gets done in bilateral meetings like this on the side. And these are important meetings because um, you don't have to have a, re a special reason or no special arrangements. Um, it's just an opportunity to go through the entire bilateral and international agenda. Relations between the U.S. and China, frankly, have become much more tense. Um, than they were before. The foreign ministry spokesman's comments uh, last Wednesday, frankly, were very emotional and hostile. So I don't think that there's going to be much agreement that comes out of this. Um, but I do think that one thing they will be talking about is the elephant in the room, and that is Ukraine. Um, and there will be a continuation, I think, of maybe some of the discussions about the need for the Russians to end the blockade and stop stealing grain. And I know that the U.S. and China disagree on the Ukraine situation, but perhaps just perhaps there could be some agreement that China would maybe use some of its influence to help release some of that grain and prevent starvation in many other areas of the world that are, that are not involved in the Ukraine crisis. Generally speaking, at meetings like this, there are three kinds of issues that come up. There are issues that the U.S. and China agree on. These are largely like transnational issues like climate change, maybe North Korea, uh, nonproliferation. Um, there are some areas where they disagree and they have to cover uh, just to state principles. And this is areas like Taiwan or perhaps human rights. And then sometimes there are other issues where they involve U.S.-China uh, competition, such as trade. So there's a wide range of issues, um, and it's important that they get in touch regularly. And every so often, something, some surprise pops out. If there's a change of position, this is the ideal venue for somebody to communicate that they want to work together or change things or make progress in some area. So we'll just have to see what the results are. So, Jeff, you know, on that third arena, the area of competition and trade, uh, the Biden administration indicates it's finally considering uh, getting rid of the Trump-era tariffs on Chinese imports. Biden has been discussing the options with advisors. Uh, what will the lifting of these U.S. tariffs do for the bilateral ties of Beijing and Washington? Well, um, first of all, the, the foreign ministers are not directly involved in trade negotiations. So if trade comes up, it will come up only in passing or to just pass a message. Second, um, the tariffs that Biden is considering lifting are quite minimal. There are now tariffs on more than $360 billion of Chinese goods coming in to the United States. And according to press reports, Biden is only thinking about lifting maybe $10 billion of that. And if he does that, he would also launch a new investigation of Chinese subsidies. Um, and it's unclear whether tariffs might result from that. So um, I, I think there was a meeting just this afternoon, and the press reports late in the afternoon quoted Biden as saying he has not decided yet what he wants to do. He said he's looking at products on a case-by-case -case basis, which could be a very lengthy process, frankly. Um, and it's not clear what the timeline is for him to make a final decision. But it will be a presidential decision, um, and uh, hopefully it will come soon. OK, so we can't be too optimistic about the product of the meeting. Can we talk about the actual talks themselves? Because, uh, yes, today we've got Wang Yi and Anthony Blinken sitting down. Just this week, we had the US uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen uh, with Chinese Vice Premier Liu He. And last month, we had uh, US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan meeting China's leading diplomat Yang Jiechi. What can we glean from these series of meetings? Well, the, also this week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States met with his Chinese counterpart. So I agree with you. There's a lot of interesting activity going on. The U.S. says that it wants to reinforce guardrails on the relationship so that our competition doesn't spill over into miscalculation or confrontation. Um, so in the Taiwan Strait, for example, uh, a military dialogue could help avoid some of those things. Um, Janet Yellen, her, her portfolio, the primary focus is, is currency issues and broad macroeconomic issues. So there may be some cooperation 
um, on those broader economic issues as well. But I think this is very important that there are these high level contacts that are going on and being maintained. And I would love to be surprised by uh, some improvement in relations and cooperation that comes out of these discussions. But at a minimum, it's important to be in touch so that you, the, both sides understand what the other is thinking and there isn't a miscalculation when, when something unexpected happens. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Jeff Moon, thank you so much for your time. He's the president of the consulting firm China Moon Strategies. Thank you.